Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 21st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. <laughs> Bigger than Watergate, President Trump now officially orders the Department of Justice and the FBI to look into the spying operation that was conducted illegally against him and his 2016 election campaign. Okay, my friends, you want to talk about the mother of all stories. This is now it. President Trump over the weekend in absolute fury is now calling FBI gate, CIA gate, Brennan gate, whatever you want to call it now. The biggest scandal in American political history. He says it's much bigger than Watergate. And now we know the name of the spy. It was officially confirmed over the weekend. We suspected, we talked a little bit about it on this show, but it has now been conclusively shown and verified that the spy that was planted by the CIA and the FBI to infiltrate the Trump campaign is none other than Stephen Halper, H-A-L-P as in Peter, E-R, he is now currently a professor at Cambridge University. However, he has, he's an American. He served in three Republican administrations. He is a rabid never Trumper. In fact, he voted, he openly said this, he voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. St Stephen Halper is known to have extremely close ties with both the CIA and MI6, which is basically Britain's foreign intelligence service. It's their version of the CIA. He is in particular very close with an individual who was the former head of MI6. So, what is now clear, my friends, is as follows. This scandal now can no longer be put back into the bottle. It is now getting so big, President Trump himself has now today officially requested and ordered his own Justice Department, his own FBI, to now officially launch an investigation. And my friends, I'm telling you, you I'm telling you exactly where it's going to lead. It's going to lead to the former CIA chief, John Brennan. What is now crystal clear is that the greatest scandal, the greatest crime, in U.S. political history was conducted during the 2016 election. And the more we find out, the more we realize how corrupt and rotten and really evil the deep state has become. My friends, they're out of control. So here is now what we know for an absolute certainty. John Brennan, who, by the way, perjured himself claiming that he never knew anything about the Steele dossier. It now turns out he was pimping out the Steele dossier throughout the intelligence community and leaking it to the media. So he's in a serious vice grip as we speak. He's in big trouble. I don't think, I'm telling you right now, John Brennan is getting himself a criminal lawyer. John Brennan is being investigated. John Brennan may end up going to jail. I'm telling you this right now. Brennan is in trouble. Comey is in trouble. Andrew McCabe is in trouble. Peter Strzok is in trouble. Lisa Page is in trouble. Loretta Lynch, who ordered this massive covert CIA FBI spying campaign, has a lot to answer for. So here is now what we know definitively. John Brennan, along with Comey, ordered FBI agents to recruit Stephen Halper, which they did, to infiltrate the Trump campaign. According now to multiple, multiple media reports, here is now exactly what happened. Stephen Halper reached out first to Carter Page, 
pretending to be his friend, wanting to get as much information from him regarding so-called Russia collusion. He then moved on to George Papadopoulos. Now, this is the key in this spy thriller. Papadopoulos was a low-level volunteer campaign aide, okay, basically the coffee boy. But his job was to provide some advice in foreign policy. Among a huge team of foreign policy advisors, he was on the lower rung. It now appears that Stefan Halper recruited Papadopoulos to meet with him in London to to try to find out information about whether Trump was colluding with the Russians and whether the Russians had agents within the Trump campaign. He lured him with a promise of $3,000 and an all-expense-paid trip to London, whereby he said, I wanted your analysis on energy issues, I swear to you, in Turkey, Israel, and Cyprus. That was just a front. He also brought with him, Stefan Halper did, apparently a very attractive Turkish assistant. Her name is Azra Turk. Literally, Turk as in Turkish. Azra Turk. Apparently, they were plying Papadopoulos with drinks. They constantly took him out to dinner. Uh, Papadopoulos now says that she was relentlessly flirting with him, basically insinuating, I will sleep with you, I'll have sex with you, if you just give me information on alleged Russia collusion. Of course, Papadopoulos had nothing to give. But the fact of the matter is that they were trying to entrap Papadopoulos, entrap Carter Page, and also now it turns out entrap Trump's campaign co-chairman Sam Clovis, uh, secretly recording them to see if they can make the case against Trump that he was colluding with the Russians. Now, why is all of this so important? Two reasons. Number one, the timeline now is everything. Under oath, Brennan, Clapper, and others, Brennan, Clapper, and Comey, all of whom said the FBI officially began their investigation after they found out from the Australians when an Australian diplomat met with Papadopoulos at a bar in London where Papadopoulos was drunk, and he said, hey, hey, I think the Russians hacked into Hillary's emails. I think the Trump campaign was working with Hillary, sorry, with the Russians to hack into Hillary's emails. The Australians, this is their cover story, apparently tipped off the FBI, and they claimed that's when we began to investigate the Trump campaign. That's when we began to look into Carter Page, George Papadopoulos, Roger Stone, Trump himself, the whole family, everybody. The problem is, Stephen Halper reached out to George Papadopoulos way before that drunken meeting in London. George uh, Stephen Halper reached out to Carter Page way before that drunken meeting with Papadopoulos in London. That means, under oath, they lied about when they started to investigate President Trump. The origins of spying on Trump began much earlier than Papadopoulos. That means, my friends, they were engaged in a clear, covert operation to bring down this president. Now... Why is this bigger than Watergate? And why are people now going to end up in jail? And I think there's no getting around it. For this simple reason. If you look at Watergate, what was the big crime? It was a third-rate burglary, but of what? The Democratic National Committee and its hotel, right? The Watergate was its uh, uh, central office. That's where it was located. So it was considered spying on a rival campaign. That's why it was such a high crime and misdemeanor. Well, here what you have is a massive spying campaign using human intelligence informants, i.e. Stephen Halper, and now maybe others, 
to not just spy on a rival campaign, to not just spy on a rival presidential candidate, but that this was sanctioned by Obama's Justice Department, by Obama's FBI, by Obama's CIA, in collusion with Hillary Clinton and the DNC. This is the Soviet Union. This is, as Mark Levin put it, Venezuela. These are the actions of an authoritarian dictatorship. These are the actions, I kid you not, of an unprecedented spying campaign violating the Constitution, violating the civil liberties, violating checks and balances, they were now openly seeking to undermine and subvert using our intelligence community to bring down a rival presidential candidate and a rival campaign. Now, Trump has issued a tweet where he has now told his Department of Justice, Jeff Sessions, this must be investigated because of the nature and seriousness of these crimes. Now, listen to the threats from the deep state. I just want to read you this. This is from John Brennan. He is now personally threatening Mitch McConnell, Senate Majority Leader, and House Speaker Paul Ryan. Quote, here's what he tweeted out this morning. If Mr. Trump continues along this disastrous path, i.e. demanding now an investigation. You will, he you will bear major responsibility for the harm done to our democracy. You do a great disservice to our nation and the Republican Party if you continue to enable Mr. Trump's self-serving actions. He is openly now threatening McConnell, Ryan, the Republicans, I don't know what he's got on them, but he's basically saying, you investigate me and my buddies at the CIA, we're going to take you all down. The deep state has declared war on President Trump. President Trump is now seeking to expose them. Game on. Okay, my friends, 1223 here on the great WRKO. Okay, um, this scandal now has broken wide open. President Trump now rips John Brennan, tears him apart on social media, saying this man personally orchestrated, it was Obama's CIA chief, a massive, illegal, covert spying operation. We now know using Stefan Halper, a, um, a man with long ties to the CIA, currently a professor at Cambridge University, Halper has received over $400,000 from Defense Department agencies over the last uh, couple of years, particularly in 2016. It is now obvious he was being paid by the CIA, paid by the FBI to secretly spy on Jenner Circle on behalf of Brennan and on behalf of James Comey to bring President Trump down. The spying now much earlier than when the uh, FBI director and others claimed that the FBI investigation of Trump-Russia collusion began. So let me tell you what happened. What happened was they began to realize, remember now, it's the spring of 2016. Trump is starting to win these primaries. It's him versus Ted Cruz, essentially. They realize, oh my God, this guy may actually win the Republican primary. He's going to be facing off against Hillary Clinton. We can't allow that to happen. If there's any shot that this guy wins, we're all going down. All of our crimes, all of our corruption, all of our spying, everything that we've been doing under Obama, it's all going to be exposed. So what they did was they launched an, a, a covert spying operation to go after President Trump. They did it months before they claimed there was a, quote, official FBI investigation. In other words, the CIA was no longer toppling governments abroad. They were trying to topple a campaign and a candidate within. My friends, this makes Watergate look like a Sunday picnic. 
Listen now to one of the journalists who I think now is she's going to go down in history as the real Woodward and Bernstein. Okay, her and Sarah Carter. Listen now to Kimberly Stracel of the Wall Street Journal, who's been now breaking story after story on this, saying it is mind boggling, incredible that Obama's Justice Department and CIA would now officially spy on a rival candidate and a rival campaign. Roll it, Brittany. I mean, look, you and I have been doing this for a long time. Can you yeah. think of any time in history when uh, this has happened or when anyone thought it was okay for... By the way, the Department of Justice is being run by one political party. Uh, surveilling, electronically surveilling, and then also spying on the leading candidate and for a nominee for the uh, opposing party running for the presidency. It's almost too big to get your head around. And you've got to think that in any other moment, in the last 50 years, if this came to light, it would be considered a stop the presses moment. It would be a legitimate constitutional crisis and a scandal. People would go to prison. And yet this is passing almost without comment, except really on this channel and you're at your newspaper. Why? Well, the mainstream media doesn't want to have to put this the way it is because they still want the Russia collusion narrative to be true. Bingo. But they're not going to be able to put the lid on this. President Trump today tweeted this. Now this, trust me, this, how do I say this? This is the opening shot of a war now. This, trust me, this, what Trump just did now, I know we've been in a war for the last, you know, year and a half, but it's now, it's officially been declared. Quote, I hereby demand, this is President Trump, and will do so officially tomorrow, that the Department of Justice look into whether or not the FBI slash DOJ infiltrated or surveilled the Trump campaign for political purposes. And he continues, and if any such demands or requests were made by people within the Obama administration. What he's saying is, crimes were committed, you're going to investigate these crimes, you're going to name these criminals, and you're going to prosecute them. Brennan, now openly, the deep state now is, they're out of the shadows, has now officially threatened McConnell and Ryan saying, you better stop enabling Trump. You better shut this guy down because you don't want to find out what we were doing because we'll take all of you down. Listen now to Joe DeGeneva. We've had him on this show, very prominent Washington lawyer, saying now Brennan himself is in the crosshairs. He's going to get himself a criminal lawyer. He's going to face prosecution. That's why he's going berserk. Roll it, Brittany. Uh, as of today, I, I understand that a referral for criminal prosecution has been made by Mr. Horowitz to Mr. Huber, who is investigating the FISA leaks, the unmasking, the leaks of the unmasking, and everything we described tonight. Criminal referrals have already been made, and I suggest that Mr. Brennan, who loves to make comment about the process, get himself a good lawyer, not a good writer. Wait. John Brennan, the NBC News yes. paid consultant? Yes, NBC News's consultant, the former director of the Central Intelligence Agency, the most partisan hack leader of the CIA in history, needs a very, very good lawyer. Criminal lawyer? Yes, criminal lawyer. Oh, yes, he, he doesn't need a uh, slip and fall lawyer, although he's going to slip and fall. Uh, he's, going to be, he's going to be in front of a grand jury shortly. Well, that's news. Yes, and it's good news. <laughs> I, 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 yes, I've been waiting. I don't know how many years for this. So, look, the inspector general, his name is Michael Horowitz. He did an internal investigation of the FBI's collusion to exonerate Hillary Clinton. It now turns out that Brennan's fingertips were over everything. This was not, it was an FBI operation, but behind it, it was a CIA deep state FBI operation. Horowitz now has completed his review. According to Paul Sperry in the New York Post, who's got great sources, he has now handed in his review for, for his report for internal re reviews. In that report, Michael Horowitz is recommending criminal prosecutions against a lot of people, Brennan being one of them. 
This report is probably going to be made public in the next week or two. So you've got Trump calling for an official investigation. You've got the IG report. My friends, what is happening right now is the deep state is under siege. And now they are desperate to bring this president down. My question to you is this. In the war between the deep state and Trump, who will win and who will lose? 617-266-6868. I promise your call's next. Let's go to Denise in the WRKO newsroom where she has details on that deadly crash that killed four Stoughton students. Take it away, Denise. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Criminal referrals have already been made, and I suggest that Mr. Brennan, who loves to make comment about the process, get himself a good lawyer, not a good writer. Well, 1238 here on the great WRKO. Okay, it was called Operation Crossfire Hurricane. The FBI, in collusion with the CIA, we now know, ran a covert spying operation on the Trump campaign and on then-candidate Trump, and they had a human spy, Stefan Halper, infiltrate the Trump campaign. This is bigger than Watergate. This is unprecedented. Our Justice Department, our FBI, our CIA, in collusion with the Hillary Clinton campaign, now openly spied on a a rival campaign and a rival candidate. This is the stuff of the Soviet Union, of Venezuela, and of other authoritarian dictatorships. Now the story is out there. President Trump is saying his Justice Department, he's ordering them, you must investigate and send people to jail. 617-266-6868. It's the war between the deep state and Trump. Who do you think will win? Who do you think will lose? Steve in Braintree, you're up next. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Good afternoon. I'm good. How are you, Steve? I think before, you know, you jump too heavy into the the whole cabal of them all colluding together and, and doing this. I think if you follow Kim Strauss at all, you know that she, she thinks there were two threads going on. And basically from her reporting, you can tell that she thinks the intelligence thread with Brennan predated the FBI thread with Strzok. And, and I happen to agree with her on this. I think that what you're looking at is Brennan set this whole thing in motion with Halper before the FBI was involved. And then they knew through the dealings with Hillary's emails that this individual who was going to head up the, you know, the, the counterintelligence division, the assistant deputy attorney, uh, the uh, assistant deputy there, the uh, Strzok guy, they knew what they had in him. So all they needed to do was lay the trail and then sick Strzok on it, and he would immediately fly to London and go down this trail. They, there was almost like a plausible, den- like a deniability here. So it's very hard. They're not stupid in the CIA. Brennan's not dumb. He knows that he can't pick up the phone and sort of make these. He can lay the trail and then push someone to get there. So I think you're going to find that the FBI and the CIA were not as much in cahoots as you think. I just think Brennan and the people in the Hillary campaign in the administration knew what they had in the FBI with Strzok running this thing, and all they needed to do was lay it out there, and he would run with it. Steve, what do you think is going to happen to Brennan? I don't think he's going to get uh, indicted at all, because I think this is this is all national security stuff that you're never going to see in a courtroom. We don't, we don't prosecute CIA directors. They know too much crap about too much. I think he's in some trouble, but I don't think that criminal referral is for him. The criminal referral is going to be for either Strzok, uh, Page, or um, McCabe. It's not going to be... The, the, first of all, the IG for the Department of Justice has no authority over anyone in the CIA. He can make a referral to the Inspector General for that division, but for him to be making a criminal referral for an employee that isn't even covered in his jurisdiction, I know DeGeneva knows what he's talking about, but that seems a little a little far-fetched for, for me, that he would be you know, referring a CIA, former CIA director, for an indictment. It doesn't doesn't seem right to me. I think there's too much going on with the FBI that Horowitz would have referred one of those three, the three at the top there. And unlikely it's Paige because they let her skate. They, they let her retire or whatever the heck she did. So it's probably going to be McCabe 
or uh, Peter Strzok, one of the two. Interesting. All right, Steve, as always, great call, great call. Uh, Thank you for that call, Steve. No, look, I think what's going on here is this. They framed Trump, and here's how they framed him. They created this false narrative of Russia collusion, and then they were the ones who were putting it in the ear of certain people like Papadopoulos. And then they had Papadopoulos, you know, he's he's drunk, he's talking. Then they used the Australians who claimed, oh, the Russians are hacking into the DNC emails. Oh, there's collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. We need to investigate this. But what is now obvious is that the puppet master was really the the spook. It was the cloak and dagger guy. It was John Brennan. And so the question then is this. To me, there's no getting around this. Loretta Lynch must have known. They were running a rogue spy operation on President or then candidate Trump. Loretta Lynch must have signed off on that. Must have. James Comey clearly signed off on that. So Halper was their guy. That was their mole. And to me, the ultimate question is, and there's no getting around this, if Brennan knew and Clapper knew, and Comey knew, and everybody else knew, Obama didn't know? Are you telling me that Obama didn't know? Of course he knew. So that's why Trump is saying, guys, we're sitting on the biggest scandal in U.S. political history, and you're still going on about that freaking Russia collusion? Are you kidding me? Brennan, unprecedented for a former CIA director has been leading the charge against Trump. Why? Because he's complicit in all kinds of crimes himself. And now it's starting to get exposed. 617-266-6868. More with your calls next. WRKO. 1248 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, it's now on. It's a war between Trump and Brennan. Really, the deep state and President Trump join Relay for Life and Help the American Cancer Society, fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. My friends, I want to remind all of you, we have a huge rally I'll be speaking at uh, this Thursday, 4.15 p.m. in front of the Salem Superior Court House. Uh, I will be there. Jeff Deal will be there. We need to demand the removal of that crooked, vile, incompetent judge, Timothy Feely. I'm urging all of you, please, if you can, attend. He must go. The sooner, the better. Listen now to this tweet. Trump now clearly sees that Brennan was running a covert uh, operation with the FBI, with Obama's DOJ, uh, promoting and recruiting Stephen Halper to have him become a spy on behalf of the FBI to infiltrate the Trump campaign. Trump has now ordered an investigation, in particular of Brennan. Listen now to Donald Trump. He's quoting Dan Bongino on Fox News, but basically saying on this, Bongino speaks for me. Quote, John Brennan is panicking. He has disgraced himself. He has disgraced the country. He has disgraced the entire intelligence community. He is the one man who is largely responsible for the destruction of America's faith in the intelligence community and in some people at the top of the FBI. Brennan started this entire debacle about Trump. We now know that Brennan had detailed knowledge of the phony Steele dossier. He knows about the dossier. He denies knowledge of the dossier. But he briefed the gang of eight on the Hill about the dossier, which they then used to start an investigation on the president. It is that simple. This guy, meaning Brennan, is the genesis of this whole debacle. This was a political hit job. This was not an intelligence investigation. Brennan has disgraced himself. He's worried about staying out of jail. This is the president himself tweeting or retweeting what Dan Bongino said, saying, I agree. So the question now is, in this titanic struggle for power, whether it's the people 
or the shadow government? Who do you think will win? Trump or Brennan? Brennan or Trump? Arthur in Chestnut Hill, you're up next. Go ahead, Arthur. You know, you know, uh, uh, Jeff, this goes back to Obama's uh, second term uh, when Brennan was, uh, was, uh, I believe, was the CID director then. And you look back now upon things that were going on then. First of all, when he was, when he was running against Mitt Romney, he must have had a plant in the, uh, in the Romney campaign. That's how we got the video of the 47%. And they've probably been doing this for a long time. Also, okay, how about the, uh, the weaponizing of the IRS against uh, the Tea Party? I haven't, I haven't heard the mention of the word Tea Party since then. And they were a huge force in politics and had momentum and, and were steamrolling candidates into, into, into Washington, and they, and they lost a lot of seats, and Obama went after them with the IRS, and we haven't even heard a peep out of the, out of the term Tea Party since. Furthermore, okay, this guy is a, this guy that's the spy, he's a, uh, he's, he's an intellect from, uh, from Cambridge University. When I saw, uh, 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 uh Brett Beer ask, uh, Comey about, uh, his, uh, intellect uh, special guy uh, from Columbia, uh, his, his, his throat uh, 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 choked like, like uh, he said, oh, he's not irrelevant. He does a few things for me. I'd, wa- I'd like to know what more this guy did. I think using all these uh, communist professors that we have in our liberal universities all over the country has probably been going a long time spying on everybody. You know, the fi- and the one thing nobody seems to mention about the Pfizer Pfizer uh, uh, judge, you know, Pfizer is for foreign intelligence, not Bingo. domestic intelligence. Bingo. Arthur, you nailed it. Look, this is, you want to know the biggest scandal of our time? Of course, it's this. But this is an outgrowth of what occurred under Obama. The creation, what do you want to call it, of a Gestapo, of a Stasi, of a national surveillance state where they were using the tools given to them under the Patriot Act to supposedly spy on foreign terrorists, and they used it to go after their own domestic political rivals. That's what they did. And you talk about uh, Brennan. Who was the one, remember, it was his CIA, who was the one that was secretly arming, sending weapons and money to Al-Qaeda, ISIS, and radical Muslim rebels in Syria? It was Brennan. So not only was he helping to aid the radical Islamists, not only was he the guy helping to nuke up the mullahs, not only was the guy, remember the, the, those, those uh, uh, tons of cash, the $2 billion in cash that they put, and they, they flew it in? Brennan was behind that secret operation. So not only was he doing all of this abroad, we now know he was orchestrating an illegal spying campaign against uh, a candidate Trump in order to ensure that Hillary Clinton would win. And he recruited a longtime known CIA operative, Stephen Halper. Halper has deep ties to both American intelligence, CIA, and MI6. So, which brings me now to another point that nobody wants to talk about. Was MI6 involved? Was the Australian Foreign Intelligence Service, were they involved? In other words, did the establishment agencies from other countries who wanted Hillary to win, they did not want Trump to win. Remember, they don't want us putting America first. They want us to continue to put America last. They're globalists as well. They wanted the globalist in power, Hillary Clinton. So how deep does this rot and corruption go? That's what I want to know now. 617-266-6868. Let's go to Luke in Harvard. You're up next. Go ahead, Luke. Jeff. Jeff, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Believe this is it, Luke. This is a great day to be an American. (laughs) Are you salivating? You must be salivating. Because about a year ago, I told you that if Obama goes to jail, I'm taking you to the Hanover State uh, State Chop House. You got to bring extra insulin because I'm going to be buying dessert too. <laughs> hey, so listen. The bigger question is: it has this goes right to the top, right to Obama, without a question on earth. And you want to know who the real losers are? The losers are the taxpayers. 
Well, who, who's going to give us this money back for all the whole year's worth of investigating? All of the intelligence agencies, millions and millions of dollars for, for in, uh, Senate uh, investigative teams, for House investigative teams. I mean, how many teams do we got here? We're looking into this garbage. Uh, Luke, I'm completely with you. I'm uh, look. We're the ones paying for it. Oh, you, all uh, of it. Oh, Luke, I'm with you. Look, I'm telling you, they're in big trouble. And I'll, you know how I know they're in big trouble? Because when this story broke about Stefan Helper, the spin machine right away, right away, New York Times, no, he wasn't spying. He was sort of investigating, just kind of looking into things. So first, remember, they didn't want his name released. You remember this? They were fighting Devin Nunez, the chair of the House Intelligence Committee. No, 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 no. This will compromise national security. Remember that? Then it was, no, 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 no. We're going to put our sources in danger. Like Stephen, Stephen Helper's life is going to be in danger now. Remember, they didn't want his, this information out. Now that the information is out, they were just, guys, spying. What spying? It was uh, investigating, just sort of looking over things a little bit. It's no big deal. Nothing to see here. I can tell by the way they're spinning. They know they're in big, big, big trouble. And so does Trump. And that's all that matters. Russ in Boston. You're up next. Go ahead, Russ. First of all, Jeff, there's no way they can sweep this one underneath the rug. And my biggest concern, Jeff, that really any freedom-loving American should be outraged over this because this government was operating as if they were the Gestapo or any other dictatorship. And I, my, the most important thing to me is that it's time to reverse the trend of this overpowering central government. The people like you and I have been sick because we've watched it go on and on over the years. And finally we got someone leading the country that understands this and is trying to reverse the trend. And all the scumbags that benefit by the status quo, of course they hate Trump. Of course they want to stop him at every turn. And unfortunately they're entrenched in both parties. The Democratic Party is, is the worst. There's no question about it. But the rhinos are no better in the, in the Republican Party. And uh, they're going to get theirs. There's no question about it. Because, you know, as people look at how things are so much better in the United States right now in the world because of the leadership of Donald Trump, um, all of this crap that they've been getting away with, it's not going to stand. I'm with you, Russ. Russ, I got to ask you something. Did you ever think you would ever see that? I only got one minute, Russ, but I want to ask you this. Where the former head of the CIA on social media, on Twitter, openly threatens the Speaker of the House and the Senate Majority Leader, saying, if you don't rein the president in when he's calling for an investigation of me and my crimes, you guys are going to pay. All of you in Washington are going to pay. He's openly threatening and blackmailing them. Have you ever seen anything like this, Russ? Jeff, I've never seen anything like like this in my life. And as a patriotic American, I always thought that we had enough good people in our government that this kind of stuff would, 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 would not be sustained. But I'll tell you, it's getting worse and worse. And Obama, he was just a wannabe dictator that got away with murder by just playing the race card. Amen. Hallelujah, Russ. Okay, I'll continue to take your calls. I promise a lot more on this. Uh, a stabbing in Boston is keeping investigators busy. Denise Allen Membrano has the details in the WRKO newsroom. What are they, Denise?